Jonathan, the internet's existed for 20 years. One of the points of it commercially has been to disintermediate old style businesses that take too much commission out of the ordinary punter. An absolute classic example of this is estate agents. We're still paying thousands of pounds for these people on the high street to put up glossy pictures of our homes and lie to us about how big the gardens are. Why hasn't the internet come along and destroyed this and is anyone trying to do that? Well, I'll come to the point about why in a moment, but I think the, there is a company that's um, planning to float on the uh, alternative investment mar market called Purple Bricks, uh, which is pledging to, it's just the latest in a long series of companies pledging to disrupt this uh, industry. Uh, and they do two things differently. One is that they don't employ uh, estate agents in the conventional sense. Good. Uh, they employ freelancers. Right. So basically what they're doing is offloading a huge chunk of the variable costs, things like the custom painted minis, yes. uh, the, the fancy high street offices, all that is offloaded uh, to individuals. The other thing they do is that rather than charge a, a percentage commission based on the sale price they obtain, they charge a, a much smaller commission at the start of the process, which is basically a fee for, for, instruct, for marketing the property. Right. So it's presumably that stops some of the time wasting. I don't know what the ratio of likely leads to final sales are, but it looks like estate agents often are in a big time wasting business. That's absolutely right. So around a half of the properties on the market at any one time never sell. Right. But they still have to be valued and they still have to be advertised and that does consume a, a large chunk of the estate agent's time and is one reason of course why the fees are so high relative to the actual cost of the service provided. There's a big cross subsidy. So they've cut out there. a lot of cost. You can't, so you can't find a purple brick shop on any high street presumably? That's right. But um, if they've, are they, how much of a profit do they make on this? I mean, what's the typical fee? A few hundred rather than thousand pounds? Well, that's right. So they, um, they, the typical average estate agent's fee is about 4,000. And obviously in London, where house prices are high, you'll pay a lot more than that. Uh, Purple Bricks charges £665 plus VAT to market your property. And unless you want some, uh, there's a sort of menu of extras, unless you want those as well, that is pretty much all you will pay. Um, right, so obviously so it's a lot cheaper. The flip side, of course, is that they are not making anything like the profits of, uh, of conventional And why haven't agents they just eaten stage? the whole market? If they're like a fifth of the price, why haven't they not taken a, like a half of the market already? Well, I think that's possibly the most interesting question. And I think the answer to it can only be um, that selling a home is, is such, such a stressful and emotional process for most people that sort of dealing with some arm's length intermediary is, is, doesn't add any comfort. Uh, and they like the idea of being able to pop round to their local high street and go and see a person in the branch who will s sit them down, make them a cup of tea and say, don't worry, it's fine, I will sort all this out for you. And the, the nature of the house buying process in Britain uh, would suggest that that's really not going to change anytime soon. And right. I do fear that Purple Bricks might struggle a bit to convince investors yeah. of its very hefty valuation. So you can change the market but not the punter and so we're stuck with the current system. Thanks very much, Jonathan.